without God. And that's offensive. <laughs> you see what I mean? I mean, this is, this is an example of how what actually is mild and, and sober and, and just um, nothing special about it, it sounds offensive because religion has managed to grab for itself this mm. cocoon of, of immunity to being criticized such that any criticism, however mild, sounds offensive. They accused you in the press, I think, of uh, funding training camps like madrasas for atheists. <laughs> it's completely untrue. Yes, it is completely untrue. <laughs> uh, following on from Robin's comments about homosexuality earlier, which were more jestful, but Richard, um, could you comment about what kind of evolutionary advantage homosexuality could have ever offered and how, when it's sort of something by definition that almost can't really carry on from generation to generation. Yes. Um, th there are various theories which are uh, sort of ingenious. I'm not sure if, if I agree with them. We're talking about, uh, about homosexuality. Oh, we didn't quite hear the key word. Is, is that what yes, it? more or less. What's, what would be... The, jo John or Joan Roughgarden has written a couple yeah. of books on it. And I think there are 450 different species being shown do have some homosexual play. In fact, it's practice, they su suggest. Yes, well, you, could, you could say that, it, that that's practice. Um, in the case of humans, well, one theory is the worker bee theory that um, uh, in, in our primitive ancestors, um, when dominant m males went off, say, hunting, and left the women behind in the, in the village or in the, in the camp, um, they would have liked to have left them under the protection of males. And the, what better way to... Um, oh, sorry, that's not the worker bee theory. The, the, the worker bee theory is that um, uncles might um, look, look after their, their, their nephews and so they get the genes passed on even if they are homosexual. That doesn't explain Bruno. Who is he? <laughs> He came after oh, I remember. Borat. Yes, I remember. No, but I, I was going on to the more interesting theory, which is the, um, the theory that, that says that when dominant males went hunting, they left behind the women and children in the charge of males that they could trust uh, not to mate with them, and not to mate with the, with, the, with the women. And what better badge of trust could you earn than being ostent ostentatiously gay? If... If the ostentatiously gay individuals were in fact bisexual, then this would have been an alternative way to uh, to reproduce. Given that you can't, given that you were not in a position to take over, say, a harem. Um, but if you were trusted by the harem owner to look after the harem when the harem owner went off hunting, then um, being gay might have been a way to to earn that trust. But I, actually, the theory that I favour is something slightly more subtle, which is that when we talk about genetic tendencies to do anything, in this case to, to, be, to be homosexual, um, the, the gene 4X is only a gene 4X under the right environmental conditions. And so what, I mean, if, the, the question only arises, of course, if there is genetic variation in sexual orientation, and there does seem to be, twin studies do seem to suggest that there is. But what if in the past, the gene for homosexuality was not a gene for homosexuality at all, but a gene for something quite different? Under other environmental conditions, mm -hmm. it would have manifested itself in some other way. It could have been, for example, that you need to be bottle-fed in order for this gene to manifest itself as, as homosexual behavior. So if, it, if a baby is breastfed, then this particular gene manifests itself as something quite other. And if the baby is bottle-fed, then eventually when it grows up, this particular gene predisposes it to be, to be homosexual. So in a world before bottles were invented, the gene would never have had a chance to express itself in the way that it now expresses itself. Now, this, the, the bottle feeding example is just an example of the kind of thing I'm talking about. It very likely wouldn't have been that. But there are all sorts of other possibilities for an environmental switch of the effect that a gene actually has. And so it could be that natural selection favored the gene under other conditions when it didn't show itself as homosexual behavior at all. 
Ähm, 